Hello my good people. In this video we'll take a look at how we can connect MongoDB Atlas to a local node and express the server using Mongoose. First we'll configure our database and make everything ready. Then we'll use the connection string as an environmental va variable to connect. Lastly we'll create a couple of endpoints to create new entries and get a list of those entries. With that said, let's get into it. So when we start this process by creating our database, I am assuming that you already created a user. So I'm logged in here, don't mind the name, but I've already registered the user. So I'm, I'm assuming that you have done that as well. So let's continue. Now let's begin by creating a, our database. Hit the build a database button here in MongoDB. And we will go for the free option shared great and we'll choose whatever is free here and this is fine all these settings are fine and cluster zero is fine for the name hit create cluster and this will take a couple of minutes to finish so to be able to uh, access our new database we need the user so here you see I have a couple of users uh, already created. So I'll just show you how how to you how you can create your own. Just hit this add new database user, and here just the name and the password. And, uh, use this uh, use this authentication method method of password. And here you can. Uh, select uh, read and write to any database but you can specify uh, whatever suits your needs uh, really but uh, this will this will work fine and uh, you don't need to take off these options uh, unless you want to and then just hit add user and just to specify in this tutorial I'll be using this user red eye user with read write to any database privileges. So now our uh, cluster has been deployed and we can create our database. So first we will create our database by clicking browse collections. And as you see, we have no data at the moment. So we need to add our own data. And here we'll add the number of our data, the name of our database, with, which in my case will be Customer DB and collection name. We can say customers like this. And uh, you don't need to tick off this uh, specifically. So it's fine without it. So just hit create. And now we have just made our brand new database. One thing to note here, you don't actually need to specify this collection because MongoDB will create one for you uh, when you post to the database. And we'll see an example of this later. So the next step we need to take care of is the access to the database regarding IP addresses. So head over to database access, I mean network access, and here we need to specify which IP address is allowed to access our data. And to be able to do it from anywhere, you just need to include this. This is obviously not secure, but for our purposes of just learning and uh, playing around, this is uh, fine. So just specify 0000, 000 with uh, periods with between and that should gain access to every possible ip address and just to add to this if we hit edit you you actually need to specify the slash here as well so don't forget that zero 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 and then a slash and then another zero and then just hit confirm so now that we have that done we can go ahead and connect to our database and to do this, we only need to hit connect. And then we see a number of ways we can connect to the database. And 
the one the alternative we will choose is this in the middle connect your application uh, to the cluster using mongodb's native drivers so just hit that and then you will be presented with this connection string which is uh, a generic uh, string uh, except for the cluster name here and maybe a few other parameters actually but the important thing here is that you change the name of the user we just made and password to that user and then the name of the database so the, these three things need to be specific to your settings so we'll take a look at how we can do this in a minute but that's the the general idea and this connection string will be placed in our code using a environmental variable in a uh, .env file that way we don't need to expose this string publicly we can have it hidden and still use it to connect to our database so let's take a look at how we can do that now so now i've only created a folder for our project and dragged it into vs code ready to uh, create files but first let's just initialize our project with npm in it just so we can create a package.json file and start installing our dependencies. And I'll just uh, type enter for every option here, but you can uh, just feel free to um, do your own descriptions. And here it says, is everything okay? And we'll just say yes. And now we get our package.json file. Now with that done, let's install our dependencies. The first dependency we'll install is Express, like so. And we have a couple more uh, dependencies. Let's just uh, continue here. We need to use our uh, environmental variables from MongoDB to, to be able to connect through our connection string. So because of this, we need to install uh, .env to be able to do that. So let's just install that one as well. And then we'll install Mongoose to help us connect to MongoDB, like so. And that for now is all the de dependencies we need. So let's get into the code. Okay, next we'll do the environmental values and connect to mongodb using the connection string so first let's create a new file called .env and this will store our connection string so here we need to make the name or create the name of our uh, connection string which i will just call mongodb underscore connection string like this and this is not a variable that you might be used to. This is not a JavaScript variable. So be mindful of how you create this because spaces and quote, quotation marks and stuff like that can really mess this up. And it will not recognize this as a connection string. So just keep it really simple with just text. Underscores are fine. And then equal sign, no sp spaces. And then the actual string. So back to MongoDB. As you can re maybe remember, when you hit the connection button here, we have some options on, in different ways we can uh, connect to our MongoDB. Just hit the connect your application uh, right in the middle. And he here you see the connection string, the general connection string. So what you need to switch out here is the username for the user you are uh, going to use and the password for that specific user, and then your database. Just to take a quick look at how that looks, let's check that out now. So when we hit database access, here we see my user. Red eye user is the user I'm going to use. And this got read right to, to any database privileges, and uh, it has a password on that user. So you need to uh, remember that, and it, uh, should be available for you. 
right when you create the user or it um, the password gets created with the user so you uh, hopefully you remember that and the databases if you see at browse collections we see the name of our database that we created so those are three things you need to remember for your connection string and if we now go here again to connect the middle one and we copy this string and we just paste it in right there and then for the username red i user not in caps and for the password you take away this uh, these uh, symbols uh, at the edges and replace it with your password and then your database in case it's customer db like this and then just replace with your password and this should be fine next let's create our app.js file like this and let's import uh, uh, our independencies that we're going to use require express and we're going going to use uh, mongoose in a minute to help us uh, connect to our database and then we need to require the .dmv for our environmental variable and one thing to note here it's config at the end like this this is important for it to work then we'll say const app equals uh, express to be able to utilize express and then instead of body parser we'll use express.json this ensures that we can use a body when we do post requests and does basically the same thing as body parser i believe but because we're using a newer version of express this is available available for us next we'll do the porch 3001 i like to do 3001 because react sometimes uses 3000 so we can do these at the same time and then our um, URI which will hold our connection string how you do this is process.env and then your environmental variable which is mongo db connection string like this so next we'll just make sure that we have an open server local server with app.listen and then our porch and not callback function there but here like so and then inside we'll just console log that the uh, server is running so app is listening at http slash slash local hosts and then we'll do the variable syntax i'll just uh, repla replace the quotation marks with backticks so we can do it like this and if we save that and go into our terminal and say node app.js we're getting an error because uh, let's see yeah i had uh, an error there misspelled let's do that again and now it's listening to 
uh, localhost and then we're missing just a semicolon but that'll fix that so everything works fine now now let's take care of the mongos part of our uh, app which will connect to our mongodb database so let's type out the connection part which is mongoose.connect followed by the uri and then some configs config strings or key value pairs which we specify because if we don't it will give uh, some errors in the console so the first one here we actually do need it's uh, required i believe because in the mongoose uh, documentation it's the only one that uh, is uh, specified but we will add so a few more because as i said if we don't they will give an error in the console so use create index and we'll set that to true as well if i can spell right and then lastly use unified topology and that will also be true so this is the first part and secondly we'll use a new uh, variable called co connection connection like this and we'll set this equal to mongoose dot connection like this and then we'll use that connection and say once and once it's open it will listen for the event uh, which is called open then we'll uh, use a callback function to console out a message signaling that uh, the connection is established so just mongodb database connection established successfully just like that and we can try that and see if it works so in our terminal just clear out and we'll say node.js just like before hit enter and we're getting some errors here Okay, so the error that we saw just now was because I hadn't um, formatted my uh, connection string correctly in my .env file. So if I just do node app.js again, we should see that everything works fine and the connection is established. But now let's create our model or our schema. And so we can actually create some data and see that data by doing a get request so first make a schema then a post request and then a get request to finally see if our data is coming back to us so let's do that now okay so to create our schema we'll create a new file called model inside this folder we we'll create a new file which we'll call customer just like this gs uh, js extension and then we'll use, we need to specify because we want to use mongoose here as well. So we need to require mongoose, just like that. And here as well, mongoose will help us to establish the connection and recognize the schema that we're making right now. We'll make a new variable called schema. And use mongoose.schema like this so now we can create our custom schema so we'll call this customer schema and it will be of be a new type of schema and parentheses and curly braces inside and here's our actual object which makes up our 
um, our data object, you can say. So we'll name that name this customer first name. This is the name of our uh, our uh, first field, and it's type of string. We specify that it's required, so required true, and that seems to be correct, and unique is also true. So this means that it's, it's a string, and we require it, you don't get to not specify this property and it shouldn't be uh, the same as any other um, any other entity in our database so this could potentially uh, become uh, troublesome for us if you have names that are completely the same but for our purposes we'll avoid uh, doing that next we'll make customer last name and this will basically be identical to the above one above one required true yeah i wrote that wrong required and unique is also true So that is our data object and then we need to export this schema or model and we'll call it customer here we'll specify this as a model within mongoose we'll call it customer and then we pass in customer schema like so so with this mongoose will be able to recognize this as being a data model that we're about to work on and it will actually create uh, a collection with this automatically in our database and we'll see that in a bit so first let's just export this as a module export, exports equals customers customer like this because this needs to be identical to this one so with this now we can um, start using this in our app.js file so let's ho head over there now okay let's head over to our app.js file and then start creating our host route which will create a new customer for us so under our connection with mongoose we'll just say app.posts need to specify the endpoint which is customer and this is an asynchronous operation so we need to specify that the requests and the response needs to go there and then the arrow making up our callback function and inside here we'll make a try catch block just to make sure that everything works uh, the way we want it to so inside our try we can just console log uh, what will be the data that we pass in our body part of our request. So I'll just say rec.body and just pass it in here like so. So when we hit send on a post request, the body that we're sending uh, sending uh, with uh, that package will be uh, console log to the terminal and now let's create a new customer 
we'll call this give it uh, a variable name of new customer like so and it's type of customer but we need to specify it as new because this is a new object we're creating object here parentheses and then curly brackets and this is the object that we just made in our schema in our model folder so here we need to specify the variable the values exactly the way that uh, we created it so we used customer first name as a key and then we'll just say rec.body and we'll just say customer first name here as well so we need to remember that when we're making the post request in postman and then just customer last name as well and that will be request dot body dot customer last name so this uh, should uh, agree with the model we just made in our schema and now we need to actually do the command for creating that new customer or writing that new information into the database and we'll do that by await another part of the asynchronous operation we're doing here and then we'll say customer dot create and then pass in new customer like so one thing that we need to do that we haven't actually done is import this schema. So we need to do that. Oh, it's actually done here. So never mind. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, after this is done, we can just say response.send and just say customer added. Just like that just to remind ourselves that this is done uh, it's done and uh, it's written to the database and here we can just console log there just like that so now let's test our newly created endpoint in postman let's just do the node app.js again to start our development server and let's just know that the connection is established. Let's head over to Postman. And here we just specify the URL, which I have already done, slash customer, which is the endpoint for the post request. And it's already saying post here. And now we need to just check that in header, content type is checked off for application slash JSON. And then let's head over to the body part and create a new object and here we need to specify uh, key value pairs that corresponds to the model or schema we created earlier so we need to do the same here so first uh, customer first name. and we can just say test to be real creative and then customer last name and something like that and let's hit send and then we get back customer added in our terminal we see the rec request.body so now we are going to check MongoDB and see if something was actually written to the database. So here we see in MongoDB Atlas that we got our data correctly. So we did the, the post request and it wrote the data to our database. And we see our uh, table or collection here, customers, which was created for us automatically. So we can see how that works if we delete this we type in customers 
and delete it. We drop it, drop our collection. The database uh, should still be up and running if we do the post request again. So let's take a look at how that looks now without creating any new databases or collections here in MongoDB and see if it happens automatically. So now we can see we have no data in our uh, collections. So let's just do the post request again with the exact same uh, body and everything. Just hit send. We see in our terminal that we got a new entry. Let's just refresh. And here we can see customers added. So the collection is added automatically uh, depending on the model or schema that we made. So that uh, seems to be some mongoose magic right there, but uh, hey, it works. So let's just move on. So let's just create the last part of our app here, which will be our get endpoint. So we'll we have already created our post uh, endpoint. Let's create the one for getting all the customers with app dot post. I mean get, and then specify the endpoint, which is customer list. And here, uh, parameters, requests and response for the callback function. And inside here, first we need to actually specify this as asynchronous. And here we say await customer dot find. And by specif uh, not specifying here, just leaving an empty object, we don't differentiate on anything. So we get everything uh, from the customer uh, collection or customers collection that uh, gets created automatically. So here, a couple of uh, parameters, error and result, which is part of a callback function again. And this will just will just console log for ourselves. Customer from DB. Result like so, and we'll just result or rest dot send result send back to the consoles or in this case Postman so we can see what gets returned. So let's head over to Postman. Let's change this request to match our newly created endpoint, which is a get. We don't need to concern ourselves with the body in the post request. We can just hit send and then we get some errors. Let's check the console. Nothing here. Oh, we need to actually restart this. So note app.js. Everything works fine. And let's try it again. And then we get the new entry that we created uh, just a minute ago. So we've we create a couple more. We just say new guy and hit send. Customer added. We see here. And if we then again go to the get request, I'm just skipping through here using Postman because you can see uh, previous uh, requests. Makes it a little bit easier and hit send. We get a new request as well as well. So this is our uh, tiny API just to see how we can connect to Mongo DB Atlas with Node and Express. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. New videos every week. See ya.